Adelaide's small enough to allow for a, a congregation of high quality researchers and sharing of information. Hospitals. And the new biomedical precinct that's been built around the Royal Adelaide Hospital creates a great opportunity uh, for people to undertake interesting and novel research. You can... Adelaide is a relatively small place, so there's no competition. Because we've been doing it here for 10 years, we know the hurdles that exist in that field and the ones that we think we might be able to answer. Throughout all of history, people have benefited from the advancement of medical technology, and even now, in the 21st century, these technologies keep advancing. In fact, with the addition of SAMRI-2, North Terrace will become the largest biomedical precinct in the Southern Hemisphere. Adelaide is becoming a leader in biomedical technologies with such advancements as the organ 3D printer and the Novosaur artificial skin. Let's take a closer look. Uh, the Ola transplant program was initiated just on 10 years ago and I had um, recently returned from studying in the, uh, working in the US and this opportunity came up with uh, Professor Toby Coates. For many conditions, what you actually need is, is functional cells rather than functional whole organs. So a lot, an obvious thing to do would be to, to look at um, transplanting, particularly for diabetes, the islet cells, because the islet cells are the only cells that create the, produce the insulin. Islet transplants are, are there and they're paid for and people who are appropriately, have the appropriate conditions will be able to get them. So that's already main, essentially mainstream. One of our projects is looking at using um, scaffolds to try and modify the space before you put the islets in there to promote vascular growth and Im improve that environment and 3D printing is one way in which we can generate those scaffolds with the cells. Now with a 3D printing approach you can create an artificial pancreas where you put the islets in the middle and then you surround them with the regulatory cells that protect them and you can also add into that mix the blood that the uh, the blood vessel cells that will su supply them with the nutrients that they need. Uh, probably the most exciting thing uh, that's happened really well in the last seven or eight years when the, was the first time that we gave a cell transplant of islet cells to a patient uh, and they came off insulin and they became insulin independent and that particular woman's been uh, cured, cured from her diabetes uh, for about eight years just with the cells. The problem is that you require two different infusions usually and possibly sometimes three infusions to get a patient off, off insulin. That's because 75% um, of those cells die within the first 24 hours after you transplant them. And they die because they haven't got good blood supply to keep them alive or they die because the immune system kills them. Now the three-dimensional printing approach by, by uh, placing the islets in a construct with a blood vessel close by and with the protective uh, regulatory T cells around the outside is, is a novel way of overcoming both of those barriers. In, in 10 years time 3D printing of organs will be very different to what we see it as today. Uh, the future of this program in five or ten years time, um, I hope um, maybe sooner than that that we will be creating artificial small pancreases that we'll be able to transplant um, into patients. The major concern with research is always funding uh, and making sure that you can actually keep these things going. It's great to have great ideas, uh, but if someone's not prepared to take a bit of a risk and give you money to do it, it becomes very difficult. The Hospital Research Foundation exists to save lives. We do this by finding cures and improving care in South Australian public hospitals. Uh, Professor Toby Coates is a, uh, is a funded researcher. He's one of the Australia's and, and if not the world's best known uh, nephrologists. Uh, Professor Coates has been a driving force behind uh, the development of uh, islet transplantation technology in Australia. At the moment we've got about 50 researchers funded across 40 different areas of medicine. Uh, from the revenue that we turn over each year, which is about $50 million, just over $50 million a year now, we raise about $4 million in donations. And then the rest of the revenue comes from what we have as commercial streams. So we do two areas. One is the hospital research home lottery, and the other is a, a property development stream that we're quite active in. 
Um, there had been no burn surgeon in Adelaide for about 18 months before I arrived. Um, I had finished my training in the UK. The NHS had made some changes which were going to be really unpleasant for new consultants. And so when the hospital here contacted me and said, would I like to come in on the service? I said, yes, I would. The Adelaide Burn and Surge uh, Unit at the moment, the service is probably the best service in the world. Um, it has the lowest mortality rate of any other unit in the world. It has one of the shortest length of stay of any unit in Australia. Novazorb is a biodegradable polyurethane or family of biodegradable polyurethanes. It's a chemistry that was invented by the CSRO. And the nice thing about Novazorb is it's biodegradable, so it dissolves when it comes into contact with water and the chemistry can be changed so that the time it takes to dissolve varies. In 2004, I went looking for a biodegradable polyurethane to create a, a suite of burn products. The development of Nanovazol BTM, which is the, the, that product there, and the, and the CCS, which is the composite cultured skin, that's happening and happened in Adelaide. And the idea is that you can take a burn off very early, which you have to do, you can apply this material and then you can leave the patient. So as it stays on the wound, it becomes part of the wound. It becomes new dermis. So you actually have a material which is a better wound bed so that when the CCFs is ready, it can go on and replace the skin graft. There'll be no skin graft at all. And that's what's going to happen from December the 1st. We found that the BTM, the way that BTM stops the wound from contracting is because the collagen that grows into it, instead of growing in as, a, as flat sheets, actually grows in, in as whorls, which are loose. And that means that you've got a material that's got space in it and a great blood supply. So we've now started to implant islets of Langerhans into it. So there is a, uh, a, quite a reasonable chance that we are going to be able to cure type 1 diabetes using this technology. We hope you now have a better understanding of these researchers, the hidden heroes of the biotechnological revolution happening right here in Adelaide.